Uh, come on. We're off. We're streaming. Hello and welcome to episode 70 of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast, live after the disappointing 2-0 home defeat to Luton. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Magic Rock. Uh, spend £40 at the shop and uh, you get a, a free delivery. Uh, check out also the, uh, the, the tap room at uh, Magic Rock in Home Firth as well. Very much worth uh, having a look at and uh, is also social distancing friendly as well. So um, with our uh, TTC regulars, uh, Richard Cosi Cosmala and Simon Copland, we're joined by the ginger ogre, Dan Gustavo Porritt. Uh, and making a second uh, appearance is our roving match reporter, uh, Martin Sykes. Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, Matt, uh, Pos- so- Pos has changed his name to Oliver Clifton. <laughs> is it that bad? He don't want to be associated with town now, or what? I think we're all going Jim White, aren't we? We're going to change our football <laughs> clubs at, at this moment wow. in time. But Nearly came so- with mask on. Jim White mask. Oh, dear. Yeah, so... so- so today we've seen Huddersfield Town uh, not only lose what could have been described as a must-not-lose game, but instead we've seen uh, a gutless shit show uh, where we've seen 10 players out there fail to take any kind of responsibility on the ball uh, with the only obvious plan to give it to a 19-year-old boy to do something. Uh, we've seen a management team fail to come up with any sort of tactical plan to defeat what was in the standings at the start of uh, the day, the worst side in the league. Uh, and a failure to empower those players to take any sort of risk or responsibility in the final third on the ball. And like many town sides of the last few seasons, seem completely paralysed with fear. Uh, so welcome to to the podcast. Welcome to all those live. Uh, let us know uh, your thoughts on the game. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I don't know. Be careful what I'm asking for there, but let us know your thoughts on what you've just seen. Uh, do you agree that it was indeed a gutless shit show, or are you happy with uh, with what you've seen? So let's fire into uh, the people that we've invited onto uh, the podcast today, Cosy, uh, and uh, a welcome to Martin. Uh, we love your match reports, Martin. I think they're very popular across the the Huddersfield Town uh, fan base as well. So. Um, a little bit different for you, but do you fancy giving us a, uh, a worded match report this time on uh, on what you've seen, and maybe one more word or two than uh, the Nottingham Forest one? <laughs> um, yeah, just so so disappointing. Um, Martin's frozen. The wonders of, the wonders oh. of life. <laughs> right. ah, no, very very disappointing. It was um, gutless. Um, no character about the team. No personality about the team. Um, as you said earlier, just trying to rely on uh, on a young kid um, was just awful. Playing two defensive midfielders against the bottom side at home, just what can you say? I, I'm pretty much speechless, which is probably not a good uh, qualification for this invite. <laughs> I think we're all there. Uh, pause. Um, before the start of the day, Huddersfield Town had the worst set-piece record in the division. Uh, Luton Town, I don't think, had even been anywhere near our box up until uh, the start of the second half. Uh, and uh, and there we go, the old Achilles here. We've we've gone with a lineup with Stankovic, uh, Schindler, Smith Rowe, Lewis O'Brien, Hogg, uh, Willock. It's not exactly uh, walking with uh, Gulliver, is it? Um, or maybe the Gulliver where he goes to where he's tiny, but it, it's not a big side. And do you think maybe there's a a, a poor game plan potentially there by whereby we've not really prepped for you know the likes of Bradley and Collins you know two big guys in the box and uh, first ball comes in and, and there we go I don't know it's it, it's a strange one I said um, on on podcast you know uh, sorry on Twitter that we're, we're very Jekyll and Hyde at the moment um, we, you know I came on and I were quite passionate in my, in my statement that we were going down and we went to Birmingham afterwards and I don't know part of me thought has anybody actually listened to this podcast because after that, at Birmingham, we seemed to come out and actually have a go at them. Um, everybody, after them, them first couple of matches, were really despondent. And, uh, you know, like we've, we've Martin said, there's no commitment there and everything out of that. But we actually came out and we went to Birmingham and, you know, we got in the faces and, all right, yeah, Birmingham want much better, you know. But we actually, at least we had a go. And then since then, we've had, I think we've had the two nil-nils, uh, Preston match. I literally fell asleep on couch watching it. It was that bad. Seen the picture, uh, yeah. A candid photo of me saying, you know, it can't be that great watching town. And I thought, yeah, I've had, you know, 30 odd years of it, love, don't worry. Um, and again, at Reading, I thought we'd, we'd, we'd looked all right at Reading. Um, we, we took it to them. And then all of a sudden, we seem to, you know, a couple of results seems to change. And I don't know if results were feeding through to the bench, but, 
you know, we, we, we took us foot off at gas again. And it was a game where we, we, we couldn't afford to do that. Now, maybe we did have one eye on, on the Luton match. You know, I'd, I'd call his mark that down as a game where we're at home, the bottom of the league. You know, let, let's not lose this at Reading, get the point and, and go into tonight and, and look for all three. Um, but you can't do that. If you're on top in a game, that Reading that game were there for the taking. And we've, we've almost shied away from going for the win and trying not to lose. And instead of getting three points there, you know, and then carrying that confidence in tonight and maybe getting the result, we've, we've come out of both games now with, you know, just the one point after a nil-nil. It's, it's, it's just pathetic at the moment. The, the commitment is, is just not there. Grant, a couple of times tonight for me, pulled out of tackles that he shouldn't really be pulling out of. Um, as he's as he lined up a move for summer, you know, uh, I'm not heard of them, did they? Really, yeah. But you know, you never know. Emil Smith Rowe again, all right, yeah, he's only a young kid, he's online, he's on loan from Arsenal. You know, I, I call that his commitment. And over the last couple of games before tonight, I thought he looked a lot better. But again, tonight, 50 50 is he's not putting himself in there, and I can't see anybody else doing it either, to be fair. The only person who actually looks like they want to put a tackle in is Fraser Campbell. And most of the time, they're stupid fouls. They don't need to be given away. I mean, he got booked tonight for that. He, referee had just had a word with him about to getting away from a free kick. And 30 seconds later, he goes and absolutely chops their left back down and he's got his back towards his own goal. He's they were ridiculous, mate. It's almost mischanneled anger. You know, we're in a relegation fight here. And there's players strolling around that pitch today like they just don't give him a toss. Honestly, I coach under sixes at, at my local junior football club and I've seen more passion and determination in them trying to get bloody football, let alone professional footballers earning good money. I mean, that, that tonight, they should be ashamed of themselves after that. You know, that was not a relegation scrapping match. That were a pre-season friendly. Let's not got injured because we've got start of season coming up in a couple of weeks. And it was absolutely awful to watch. And if clubs think that people are going to be down next season, this break, as I said before, will be a, a big marker on people's commitment towards this club. And if they can't see it out on the pitch, they are not going to go down there and pay £250. I know it's cheap compared to others, but in these times, it's still a lot of money. They're not going to go down there and start handing over money and to be watching that week in, week out again. The last, I, I saw a start of the day, and if you take our promotion season out of the equation, which, all right, yeah, you're fiddling with stats to make it fit, but take that out in the last... 10 years, 49% of those field town matches have resulted in us losing. And you can see why people are getting really, really pissed off with it all. I'm normally quite positive and I like to be as positive as I can, but at the moment, I'm, I'm, I just can't be asked with it anymore. I just get to the end of this season, have a clear out. The full squad for me needs to be rejigged, reshuffled. There's players in there that have, you know, they've been heroic in the past, your shinless, your hogs. They just look past it. You know, they just look absolutely mentally, physically drained by it all. And that he just needs a full clear out and starting again for me. Because at the moment, I mean, that was pathetic tonight. I mean, I don't know what you guys think. And sorry for I mean such a rant, but I think we could end it there after that. I think that sums it up nicely, to be honest. Uh Cosy, um you sat there per, uh, patiently and you're uh, a few people might want to know what shirt that is you've got on as well. It's a bit of a special one. Yeah, how about Hurricanes, mate? Sponsored by Cadbury, but we all know Galaxy's your best chocolate. <laughs> you you know. What can I start? I mean, where do we start? I thought the turning point of the game was that, I can't remember who that Luton guy, he was a naughty tackle, to be fair, but he wanted the ball. He went through, oh, bam, yeah. to shell about. And for me, that was it. Luton were up for it. We were retreating. And I think after that, it just went downhill from there at, I've been really concerned. I've been kind of been criticised a lot in the last few games. I've been coming on people saying, good point, a good point here and a good point there. For me, Birmingham, we had the momentum. We played well. He changed the team for Preston. Happy to pull up stumps against a, a team totally out of sorts. Then we moved on to Wednesday again. Happy for the draw. Piling the pressure on Fridays. We know town in big games. They don't deliver. Mansfield Town back in the day. Pick any playoff game. Pick any big game at the stadium when we need to deliver. We never do. We never do. And tonight, no exception. But Pozzo, you called a few you know, things out. But I, I was sat watching it with Gailey tonight and he's like saying, why should some of these lads care? They're not even going to be here next season. And it looked like that. I mean, what was so destroying for me was seeing the second goal, the replay of it. I mean, when it hit the post... Andy we, King, Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, yeah. So when that ball it posted, it fell out to edge of the box. And their guys, mate, he must have made 10 yards to pick up that ball and he's... Yeah. It was Andy King, I think it was. Smashed into Andy King. Andy King, yeah. Put it straight in top corner, man. Absolutely pathetic. 
He's it been was. a waste. Of, for me, he's a waste of a loan. Him that that goal yeah. at Forest as well summed him up. Where he were gassed after thirty minutes and he, he couldn't get up at the far post. It's just it it just sums a lot of things up. Does that those two goals? I can't remember. A, I can't remember a contribution from that fella for the whole time he's been here. He's, no. he's just anonymous. You know, at least he reminds me of Tommy Miller. Five, but, yeah. Yeah. When we used to have Tommy Miller, he used to play well for five, ten minutes a game and then be anonymous for 80s. He's very much of that. That mold. Shall we? Shall we hear what some people are saying, cause on uh, on YouTube? Well, let's hear from Cyphers because he's he's silent but deadly. Oh yeah, sorry, like... Cy. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good I evening, Cy. No, I mean I, I echo everything everyone said and, and kind of kind of risk of repeating all the points that have been made. Um, lack of kind of commitment, desire, um, passion was kind of so evident, um, or not, want a better phrase. Uh, the, the one kind of build that I have on what everyone said is what really disappointed me tonight was was kind of Danny Cowley's substitutions and, and kind of willingness or kind of appetite to, to try and change a game and try and do something different. The substitutions were like for like. We probably could have all written them down, kind of what substitutions would be made before the game even kicked off. And I appreciate games coming in short succession and, and players are carrying injuries and not quite fit etc etc but kind of we're 2-0 down with 20 minutes to go at home we're in a kind of relegation fight as people said we've got nothing to lose do something different go two up top kind of play some different sort of balls but no kind of we kept the same kind of regimented shape throughout the game that um, had done nothing and achieved nothing and kind of the, the period that summed up for me was around kind of 84 minutes where it goes from Stankovic to Schindler to Toffolo, back to kind of the centre midfield, back to Stankovic, back out to right, back all on the halfway line. And Luton kind of sat there thinking, well, this is fine. This is this is exactly what we want Huddersfield to do. Kind of keep the ball in the middle of the park. And I was, the players have obviously got to take lots of accountability and, and responsibility like people have talked about. But for me, kind of, I was expecting more from Danny Cowley in that moment. Do something different. What have you got to lose? Um, we might as well kind of, concede the third but at least kind of get some bodies in the box and kind of have a go but um, it was just more of the same I thought uh, sat in my remote control me on Sky because we were, I'd sort of sat on the backwards button because we were going backwards and it was going slow I thought hang on a minute have we, have, have we got it on the right speed here or what but it was it was so bad and uh, Matt I don't know if you've got any comments there that you can read out but I, I think Danny Kelly's job is on the line you know I don't want to be dramatic about it but and it wouldn't be the biggest surprise to me if, if he was not here this time tomorrow. I I just wonder whether... I don't, we, that. I don't, think, no. we, I don't think we can afford to sack him because they put that much effort into getting him here. You know, Phil Oskins made a massive deal about bringing him in and then, you know, you can't you can't sack him now. You've got to, you know, give him... I don't, well, I don't, actually, I don't think we could probably... Afford no, I'm not saying sack him, Paz, but I don't think it'd be the biggest surprise. Pep Clotet's gone. I know he was going to the end of the season, but they want a reaction. We there were our reaction tonight. What did Danny Cowley? What's that quote on the Instagram the club put out tonight? Shall I look at it again? Go on, Matt. You read some out. I'll read it. I read some YouTube stuff out. I'm, I'm I don't really want to hear from Danny Cowley at the minute. He's, he's, he's annoyed me. But uh, yeah, Chris K says what I've just seen. I won't be watching Tuesday night. Sod that. Waste <laughs> of my most of my time. Matt, uh, here it is. We know, and I'll quote it off the club's uh, official Instagram site. We know the significance of this game. We intend to show everybody the best of Uddersfield Town come Friday evening and even quoted it and put his face to it. That was the best of other still town against the worst team in the division. Scary. No, I, well, think that, that kind of sums I don't know if they are the worst team in the division now, to be honest, but <laughs> there we go. Just just coming back to that statement though, do, do you not think that the, the sort of powder puff performance on the pitch tonight kind of sums up where we've been for the last maybe two and a half years? You know, even when we were in yep. Premier League, we're a very soft club, aren't we, throughout? Do you not think it's... Yeah, it's, well, that's what I was saying, Paul, at the start. You know, it? we look paralysed by fear and we saw that 2017, you know, 2017-18. We, and, it's the, and it's a lot of the similar sort of players as well that we've got in the side. You know, um, Jonathan Hogg and Schindler are two players in particular who don't look the same as what they did a couple of years ago. Oh. You know, like you say, because they look a bit shell-shocked, don't they? Schindler from, today, get mate, that goal. I, I could have guessed, yeah, I could have really guessed, soft. mate, it would be out-jumped. Shocking. Lossel yeah, needs to come for that for me, though. Lossel needs to come and kind of take man, kind of ball everything in the six-yard box. There's Schindler that, play and kind of Lossel Schindler's got like. somebody, uh, Schindler's got somebody in his back pulling him as well, and the, the defender next to Schindler, which I can't remember it was, should be knocking that guy away. He should be, you know, he should be helping his teammate out, you know, physically in the box, you know, get off my, get off my mate, you know what I mean? You know, the other guy's holding him, you know, and, and pulling him. 
it just oh, get off fight. him. You know, do something, fight. You know what I mean? Sh- show some kind of team spirit, camaraderie. You know what I mean? Just togetherness. That's what we want to see. And we're not. We just didn't see that today. Birmingham was great, well, but today was the polar opposite. Nathan Jones at halftime must have thought, well, what is what? What are we playing against here? We were expecting a some sort of battle. We were expecting to be pinned back on, into our penalty area. We basically barely got into their box, and half time comes and nothing's happened particularly. And he must have said to his players, "You've nothing to be here," and sends them out about five minutes before our team come out. Our team wander onto the pitch, and within three minutes, and that excellent tackle that you, that you were talking about, one nil down with a goalkeeper. Another one, Lossel. He made a good save at Reading, admittedly, but what does he what does he actually do with that fella? He, he rarely makes a save. I thought he was out of position for the for the shot that hit the post that then Andy King were miles away from. Just. Anyway, the, the whole the whole team just annoyed the hell out of me tonight, all of them, uh, apart from perhaps Smith Rowe, who was given yeah. far I too much responsibility. Tries, he tries to do something, doesn't he? He'll get yeah, ball he's and, positive. And turn forward. I mean, it's like watching a bloody load of crabs play football, side to side, yeah. side to side. Matt, what are people saying out there, mate? Do it, Dave, can you read any of them out? Yeah, look, uh, no filter on some of these. We're past the nine o'clock watershed. Um, Simon, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Chris Case says, Callan Grant's too predictable. Tom Bolton uh, earlier, Martin, when you said you didn't know how to describe that game, succinctly says it was wank, Martin. <laughs> Simon Morgan says, hey, guys, quick questions. If you don't mind discussing where is the Premier League money and why do we... Why did we destroy Birmingham City? Where the hell has that lineup gone? And the passion from the game? No idea, mate. If we knew that, well, then I don't think we'd be Birmingham, to be fair, though, we said it on the night, didn't we? They were very not arsed. Yeah, they didn't. And that, that is my only hope for the rest of the season that Wednesday and Millwall adapt the uh, the Birmingham match because West Brom could be very don't messy it, if they need it. to win it. Yeah, yeah. to go up. Yeah. But, yeah. Millwall won. If we do, stay Millwall up, what hope does any of this give you for next year? Yeah. Uh, you know, unless we get. A- you know, it Phil's needs that asked, broom. It needs I that know. broom pause. We're just going to be in the same situation. You know, we can't, from what, you know, what's coming out at the club is, you know, and, and, you know, I kind of get the, you know, the COVID-19 situation, but that's going to be across all football. So for me, that kind of levels the playing field. You know, everyone's in the same situation in regards to that. So are we able to clear out all these players? You know, if we sell Grant for big money, we're looking at losing O'Brien, you know, because it's only probably two assets that we've got. Are we going to be able to bring anybody in to even compete next year? Are we better off going down and starting again? I don't know. It's it's, it's tough. No, I, I can't. I can't hack League One again, mate. Um, Fenerbahce apparently are interested in Janino Bakuna, and uh, hopefully they're a bit more interested than what he was in playing today because he Fleetwood or Fenerbahce. Have you got that right? Fleetwood or <laughs> Fenerbahce? Yeah, apparently, right. yeah. So, um, by the way, I'm, I like him. I've liked Bakuna a lot this season, but. I feel like saying you're welcome to him at the minute. I'm just not in a good place well, well, after that. Um, but yeah, so Dan Peckett. I was going to say about Bakuna, I've said a few times, the lad's got the ability and I've stuck up for him. But after that picture... It's like, not in the head. Even tonight, he's, he's just gone out and kicked a few people just for sake of it. Really. Also, there's no one else creative though. Who, who the hell is there? Apart from Smith Rowe, no one. Who's going to pick a pass or do anything? We've seen it this year What Bakuna's tonight. He gets on my nerves with his recklessness. But tonight... I'd have rather had him on than O'Brien and Og all the time. You know what? What was that about? Two old midfielders against the worst team in the league. What is going on? We're at home. You've got to let yeah. Lewis O'Brien off the uh, off a little bit. So we'll finish that. So uh, Dan Peckett says Willick has uh, been abysmal. I'd rather see a fighter like Kachunga. May sound harsh, but I'm not sure I want to see Bakuna in a town shirt again after another booking. Uh, Birmingham must have been really bad for us to beat them, says Chris Kay. Uh, Chris Graves says, schoolboy stuff. Pete Collins says, I feel like five years since the season started, I can't wait for it to finish. However, I do think town will stay up. Uh, George, but he's coming through quite a lot coming through. It's, it's always busier when we lose, I'll be honest. <laughs> we've been busier. <laughs> yeah, so David Will says, that performance was inexcusable. No attacking threat, no quality in the final third. Same old story. George Parsons says, not up to the fight. Dale the Danger Marsden. Uh, says this isn't a one-off yet another abject spineless clueless performance for 2.5 years it's like he's, he's copying you there pause um and it's been widely accepted barring a handful of games not a single player cares and there's quite a few so thanks to everybody who's who's coming through uh same failing says matt ellis um 
Andrew Washington says he can take a defeat. That comes with support in town. What's not acceptable is a lack of effort. And also, how bad were Carl Shedlow tonight? Two songs, that's all you had. I couldn't even hear it. I don't know if it would be. That Carl Grant, he got his name sung about every minute, but it didn't make any difference. Still a dire, wasn't it? Might have been too loud. I think that's what they said first time. It's too loud. Put us on. No, the lack of energy. I mean, the Keith Andrews, I thought, were trying to be fair. I don't think he wants to offend people, does he? But he was saying there's been a lot of games and short space of time. He was kind of trying to make excuses for the standard of the football and the energy and stuff. But I've got to be honest, Dad, I think we've we've not seen much to kind of get us out of the seats for a while. I thought it would have been very, uh, very kind, really, and that as well, especially in the first half. And I just thought, because I saw Luton play at Leeds the other week when it was on the TV, and they played a lot better, I thought, again, in that game and scored a great goal. But I just, there was an air of inevitability about that corner, wasn't there? Did you not think? Yeah, I, I think um, it wouldn't surprise me if they've looked at kind of the town stats and kind of identified that as a weakness. And lo and behold, kind of the probably worked on that set piece through the week and, and kind of scored the goal. And, Four warning, by the way, kind of Sheffield Wednesday, Millwall, West Brom, they'll have all seen the same stats and there'll be more kind of balls into the box, there'll be more kind of, um, kind of dare I say it, challenges kind of uh, like like we've seen tonight kind of, uh, in the kind of games to come. I think the most disappointing thing is, I think we've, I think, we can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but we've played two games, Preston and Wigan, I think both at home, and we've had one shot on target in each, in, you know, in each or even together. We haven't scored at home. That's the annoying it's thing as well, isn't it? Fight. You want to be flying shots in at keeper, you know, from all angles. And Simon, you called it right uh, when you had, you know, right at start. We, we two 0 down, fifteen twenty to go. You get your ball to your fullbacks and you tell them stick it on the edge of the eighteen yard box on Mooney's head, and you get three players around him, and all you do is fight for scraps, and literally you just bypass everyone in midfield, go long, 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 long. I mean, it's Sunday league tactics, but who cares at this point, you know? Get it into a box, you might get a penalty, you might get a free kick, you might get a mistake, you might come off someone's ass and end up in the back at net, you might get a corner where you can scramble some That's got to be better than seeing defenders passing it backwards and forwards back. 20 yards yeah. from their own goal. I mean, come Pop, on. Yeah. Pops, I, were, I were wondering at the start of the season whether we would be one of the biggest sufferers for not having the fans in there. Now, it might be a tame excuse, and I can pr- I'm not looking at the comments and said, shut up, excuses, but I just thought. I think RFO map. I know it's not a patch, well, a bit harsh, but maybe not as, it's definitely not as high octave as that promotion is in the first season of the Prem. But I just felt that we would miss that at home. And do you think there's no coincidence with being absolutely garbage at home, no goals? And Gaylor was saying to me tonight that so there's no way Luton would win if we'd have fans in the ground. But, you know, kind of, I, I know it's trying to say in the fact that our players would be, We've. I think we need players that kind of, feed off something or am I just making excuses for, for that? I think you might have a point, actually. I think I think you might have a point. I think they've struggled desperately in the uh, non-atmosphere. It's no excuse. No excuse at all because other teams have been able to win at home um, and other teams obviously have suffered at home as well but they, it go, comes back to character and I just don't see much in it. I don't, I don't see much character in that team at all, in the squad. Um, I think the Cowleys, who I've got a lot of time for, um, have lost the plot in this in this uh, in this extended period. What I was optimistically hoping is that the two previous nil nil draws were managed in terms of player fitness, player availability. Make sure that they don't pick up silly injuries and um, and and lose members of the squad, and we'd be up for what was a crucial game. And they just weren't. And and the way that they started in the first half, the whole of the first half, it it just looked timid. Mm. It was cowardly. (laughs) We're playing a a team struggling at the bottom of the league, and we've we've not hurt them in any way at all in 45 minutes. And then we come out in the second half, half asleep, because he keeps them in the dressing room. God knows what he was telling them. Keeps them in the dressing room while their, their players are on the pitch getting ready. And they were ready. And within three minutes, we were 1-0 down. Martin, do you think that we lack a little bit of... I, I've been so frustrated. I just feel we've, 
we're trying to get results. Well, this is a good point, and this is a good point. Instead of trying to win every game, and tonight it was almost like it would definitely. I, people were saying it was a must-win game. I won't buy that. I was saying it's a must-not lose, but I yeah, did. Absolutely. But I did not want us to play. I did not want us to play like we must not lose, but we did. Yeah. It was, and the absolutely. first half hour you could see it, and I'm thinking, okay, we've got to do something different because eventually and they'll get a chance. As the home team, you've got to set the agenda. You, you, it's up to you to get yourself on the front foot and get them going backwards. And they, they had the easiest time they could, they could have dreamed of. Well, I think you were right, Martin. I think, I think when Luton came out onto that pitch today, not just as a, as a, as a Luton Town manager, I would be thinking, do you know what? This is Huddersfield Town's chance to be safe. If they beat us tonight, they're probably going to be safe given Wigan's points deductions. And you would be saying to your players, look, lads, First 10, 15 minutes, keep it tight. We don't want to concede. And after 15, 20 minutes, you must have been thinking, what's going on here? This is ridiculous. And I think exactly as you've said, he's got to half time and he's gone in there and he said, this is insane. This, You know, what, yeah. what are they doing? Let's go out, hit them early with a sucker punch because if we do get that early goal, they'll be, they're not going to come back into it because there's, there's absolutely nothing there. And the thing that annoys me most about how we've played tonight as well is all last couple of days on social media and all, all that that the club put out, you know, we'll do you proud, we're in it, this is the real Huddersfield Town and everything like that. And then they go and do stuff like that. I don't know, the people who run social media at Huddersfield Town need to just keep quiet, I think, because it's just... Yeah. Us- well, I, I, arguably, it was the real Huddersfield Town. Well, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely crap, yeah. I'll tell you what, I go back to that second goal, it, it was so destroying, that above camera, it was kind of must have been high up in the south stand, just to see... I mean, Schindler were like, he gave it up. Other guys weren't running back. I mean, the guy, it was a nice finish, don't get me wrong, but we just a lack of that. And then loss at the end, like wobbling about, dropping stuff. Absolutely scared. It, it was soul destroying because I think it, in. It starts with Bakuna in midfield, just not, not switched oh, on. Did he and slip? He, he, just, did he, he falls on his backside, Slipped. it goes up in the air. And then the ball goes through the back line that are all over the place. You know, your back line, you're keeping a straight line. You play them offside. You know, if there's a if there's a man on the shoulder, you stay together so you can play him off. Stankovic is back here. Schindler's up here anticipating, and the fullbacks all over the place. And and all of a sudden he's through. He looks about ten yards offside, but it's not because of the, how slow we were to react to it. Yeah. And then can I, can he did the post. Just... Good effort. It did and look then offside, didn't it? Yeah. The follow up. <laughs> Jesus, the follow up. I don't I don't understand what's gone on though because when Callis first came in, all right, literally under Jan, anybody could have done better. But they turned it around. <laughs> didn't they? You know. A, a, you know, a man with a white stick would have done better than him. So they came in and they turned it around and they got six, they got six without defeat and all that. And then yeah. you know, we, we had we faltered and we probably averaged back out to where we were, but we were looking pretty safe before lockdown and stuff like that. Yet for some reason, it, it just seems to have changed. And I'm just, I've heard various rumours about things, you know, going on behind scenes and stuff like that. Do you think there's a bit of friction going on? And Pause and I, the really leads. Was, it just seems a totally different attitude to what it was. Before we, you know, we have I've mentioned we... this before, it might just be a wild acquisition, but the Leeds game disturbed me because I just felt that we laid down and died after we'd won them comfy games against Bristol and Charlton. I thought we laid down and died. Cowley, Cowley, like embar- it, were embarrassing to... after the game with BL set. I just thought he said a lot. Stadium tour pass back, didn't he? After that, yeah, game. It, it almost said everything went about as a club at the moment, like we can't. We're not as good as you. We're almost like Chris Powell again. And I, I really disliked that. I was very angry that, that night. Quite I remember a few tweets. I remember thinking same, yeah. yeah, but then obviously we've had this big break, so I don't know if you can link it to it. But I just wonder, Pause, if it's like this the kind of, to me, this lack of going forward. I know we're not blessed with creative players, but we've got better than most teams, you know, down at the bottom. But it's almost like now I, we're, we're just... We'll fudge a majority in and we'll, we'll try and get something there. When Birmingham were, they were awful. I think I might could just say that with a one off, but I just I just don't like, I don't feel we're setting up to try and win a game. And then when you see two older midfielders like we did today, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, he took them off eventually, but it's just like too late, mate. For me, I were playing at the moment. It's just, can we just do enough? Can we just do enough to get enough points to stay in division? Let's not care about how we play. Um, we're not bothered about fancy football. We're not bothered about any of that. We're just trying to stay in the division. And do you know what? If somebody just came out and said, look, do you know what, fans? What, next four or five games, we're not going to be entertaining. We're not going to be doing this. We're not going to be doing that. As literal aim is to stay in this division. Not going to be pretty, X, Y, and Z. And just say it as it is. But they don't they do it the way. They talk about all this pride and passion. And, you know, How good it's been in training. And it's... What, what's going on? It, seems it was funny, Pause on them Instagram ones where 
they're getting further and further apart. And it's them Instagram stories where they're covering the face with a smile and saying, who's this? I'll tell you what, you could have had it on 11 players tonight and you wouldn't have had a clue, would you? <laughs> Shocking, oh, man. Sorry, I'll cut you off there, mate. Go on, what are you going to say? No, I just say that them Instagram things this afternoon when it shows a player and it got his head covered with a big like smiley and who's this and you have to type it in. I'm thinking you could tonight between six and eight o'clock you could have kind of guessed eleven players and wanted to know them. But I mean, what's happened to that kind of Teddy spirit and Schindler? It's just it's it's almost soul destroying to be talking about a man who really maybe could have had a statue for what he did, obviously on that famous day to just. It's just like a, a pale shot. It's it's just sad. Mind. It's awful, mate. It's so sad. And but again, who else? Because uh, yeah, they've well, just... taken some knocks over the past few games. Hasn't oh, it seems to, to be down all the time, Martin, doesn't it? Yeah, moment, I think but... he just. Put, I think he's probably just punch drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to come back on Posse's point a little bit. Um, just when he kind of talked around, kind of what's good on kind of behind the scenes, and obviously none of us are privy to that, but. Looking from the outside in, it definitely feels like there's a little bit of kind of discontent brewing. Um, kind of the, the Danny Simpson kind of, um, dare I say, airing our kind of uh, dirty laundry in public, weren't we? And I appreciate that was um, Danny putting things out there first and, and kind of Huddersfield responding afterwards. But it was obvious from, from what's been said subsequently that Danny Cowley wasn't happy with how that was handled. He would have wanted him to stay to the conclusion of the season and, you could argue if it was the right thing or the wrong thing to do, but but there's definitely some discontent there. And I think similarly a little bit, and maybe it's just, just me reading too much into things, but the way the whole John Stankovic situation has been handled, kind of um, Cowley said he would have liked to have keep him, I think, kind of hopefully not kind of misquoting him there. Um, but obviously they kind of, whilst we don't know what division we'll be in next season, seemingly the club's not prepared to commit to uh, extend his contract. And you just kind of yeah, feel little yeah, things like contracts that. contracts out to Romani, Critchlow, Noble and a couple of others. So yeah, you, you just feel kind of in isolation, quite quite small and petty things, but kind of yeah, five yeah. or six smaller petty things soon add up to quite 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 big things. And um, yeah, no, you're right. just feels like a, a little bit of kind of disharmony there. Um, that uh, I I picked up exactly what you've said there. The, the couple of interviews after after the Danny Simpson mm. answer, which thing, Cowley made he made quite a big point about talking about how much money we've got to spend and we can't afford to keep players. He, he, he was very explicit in saying that he would have liked to keep both players. Uh, now you know if money's not there, it, it's not there. He's on you know Cowley don't call the shots. We, we you know he don't sign the checks. But if Phil's gone after him like he did, you know they turned us down. We went back for him. He had, did he have a dossier on him? He'd done research on him and put a lot of time and effort into, into getting Danny and Nicky Cowley to Huddersfield Town. And again, yeah, there's the COVID-19 situation to take into account, but still, you know, the, the noise that were coming out of Phil when Cowley's came were, you know, they will be back, we don't need to sell. Um, and, and all that seems to have just, just turned on its head. Yeah, I accept we will lose money, you know, but every club will. So these players aren't suddenly going to be able to find better deals anywhere else. And it, I, I think I agree with you there, Simon. It might not be one big massive thing, but a culmination of, look, I need this player. I want to keep this player. Next season, are we going to be able to do X, Y and Z because we need this, that and the other? Phil coming out and saying stuff like it's already a top six squad. I mean, Danny Cowley must have fell fall off his chair when he heard that because I bloody did. That is nowhere near. If that's a top six squad in this league, then Jesus Christ, Danny Cowley wants to be sacked tomorrow because that league at the moment is so poor. And if that's a top six squad and he's down at the bottom, he ain't doing his job right. I, I wonder if he was talking about top six wages. <laughs> top six wages, yeah. Top six I think wages. I think I think there's an argument to say you could take individually, you could take players out of Uddersfield Town and put them in the squads of other ones and they'd do okay. But you put them all together. And and one thing to consider is that Huddersfield Town are such a poorly balanced squad. Um you look at what's on the field and how many small players we've got in the set piece situation. You look at there's no playmaker in midfield, for example, in that double pivot. Um, we struggled for a 10 all season because of the Pritchard injury and Smith throw. And it's not really blaming those of late. It's a culmination of uh, a number of years of, of bad recruitment, really, and, uh, and or bad luck in some cases and, and bad planning in others. And a director of football role that seemingly seems like a revolving door as well. So the squad itself is probably not particularly balanced. You know, you look at Stankovic and Schindler, it's not a well-balanced combination at the back. You know, you need... As a, as a friend of mine, Mr. Hartrick says, a, a daisy and a dolly at the back. You need, you know, someone who's a bit more brute strength and someone who can play. You know, you need combinations. And we, I don't think we have the right combinations throughout. And all we seem to do is try and engineer Carl and Grant into a shooting position. And we're very one-dimensional in what we do. We 
there's no other way that we tend to attack or score goals. It's just simply a slow build up, give it to Smith Rowe, something will happen. Maybe someone will move off him, look for Carl, and he's in a good position, beat it, shoot. And that's what we do, rinse and repeat. And and it stopped working. And that's that's the worrying thing at the moment. And Carl and Grant is playing very poorly and, and has done for me since December with uh, a couple of good performances thrown in. But it's, let's let's say it's been patchy since December and poor since the since the restart. It, it, it is worrying uh, that he's pretty much the only source of goals, despite Mounier having a flurry around Christmas. Let's be honest, Murray, uh, Mounier did have a good flurry from set pieces around Christmas, but that as well seems to have, have dried up, but he's carrying a, a, a quad injury. So let's have a look at some of the comments. So Dag Barnett uh, says the worst thing to consider is how much these players cost. That's enough to make you want to jump off Emily Tower. It's such a um, such a, uh, a positive podcast tonight, isn't it? But this is what football does to us all. Uh, Craig Blythe. Uh, says uh, some of these just can't, some of the players can't do the most obvious things in and around the box and haven't been able to do for three years. So a lot of people saying the uh, the same thing. Uh, Dom Lister says I don't think we'll re- realistically get any more points from the next three worrying times. Uh, and um, Simon Morgan says we are genuinely 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 missing someone like uh, a Bullock or a Morrison uh, or a Heffler. Um, it says Heffler wasn't the best, but I think Heffler was a better footballer than I think a lot of people gave him credit for. But Tonight we were lack leaders in this team. Yeah, we were missing energy, in, and to me, I thought we were missing a bit of commitment. I get I go back to that 50 50 in front of the uh Kilner Bank, which for me were a big kind of moment there. Because I mean, to be fair, if you hadn't got the ball, I think it'd have been red. But whether we'd have won against 10 men playing like we did, I don't, I don't know. But I just want to see hungry players, fresh players, people that care. I mean, to, I, I think you could have argued like for the other games, yeah, maybe a bit tired and people care, but. Tonight, we just, especially when the wheels were coming off with like, it, it went, them last 10 minutes were embarrassing, weren't they? We were like, we were get they were just dropping back behind the ball and we were, there were no idea. Well, they're like, said, Pozzo, just get, fire something in the box or, you know, do something different. Something, do yeah. something different in the past, the day. Nine, well, 85, with well, seven minutes added on. You know, it's like when you're in a game, you're seven minutes on board, goes up and crowd, go on, go on. You know what? I just thought, God, is this another seven minutes to enjoy yeah. this crap? <laughs> yeah, bloody half a six of it. It could have, could have been 70 and we wouldn't have got two. Yeah, we're still playing next week, man, and then we wouldn't have bloody six. No. Where are Carl we? and Grant, I'm more, I'm more worried on Carl and Grant that we don't get rid of him. I mean, I keep hearing all these big numbers being, and, and of course, he's a goal scorer. And he probably would score a lot of goals in a, in a better team. But as a footballer, I mean, in the first 15 minutes, his performance was utterly shocking. I mean, he couldn't control a ball, couldn't see a pass, hung on to it too long, got caught every time. And I I, I often wonder what Grant, well, why are Premier League know, clubs even interested? I know what you're saying, Martin, but he's a goal scorer and he's been fed on scraps. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's come to a restaurant for some food and it's shut. It's like, yeah. he's have, and I get you, don't offer the other thing outside about it. He's frustrating. He seems to kind of not hold it up and what have you. But I would argue 18 goals in, in a team that creates very little. It's so frustrating, though, isn't it? We've got like Chris Willock as only winger. We had about 506 on the books, maybe exaggeration, but start of the season. And there's just no, there's just the energy. And I thought Luton were, well, Luton were poor, weren't they? Let's not be around the bus. Yeah. They were yeah. horrible, but you knew they'd play a bit better, but I expected us to come firing. I think just the way he is at, God, I, me and my big mouth thinking we'd be 13th, 14th and be more than comfy. But before the break, bar leads, we looked all right and it's yeah. just, I, what's I, gone wrong? That's what I was getting at earlier. The, before we went into the break, I'm looking, I wasn't worried at all. I wasn't bothered at all. And we came back, we had Wigan and Forest and I'm, you know, I'm thinking this is, this ain't going well. I said after the podcast, I think, you know, we're definitely down and, you know, everyone was saying, I think we've got enough. And yeah, all right, we played at Birmingham and did all right and a couple of nil-nils. And again, I'm thinking, you know, it's not great to watch, but if it gets us through to the end of the season, then go on. But for every Birmingham, we've we've got a Wigan and we've got now a, a Luton performance in us. And we're just so inconsistent. I can't see us scrapping enough to get enough points. There's teams below us, probably not as good, but they seem to have a bit more fight. And that that's what gets you out of a relegation battle at the end of the day, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeffrey Wednesday in crisis, though, aren't they? But, but... Well, they'll get some points deducted and maybe Birmingham retrospectively as well, and then we'll stay up. But, you mm, know, when you've been in your laptop on that, it's a bit of a, you know... Yeah, well, that's, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much the hope, isn't it? Others' incompetence and and uh, other clubs being penalised. That, that's the hope. Do you think we'll have to go to Millwall or get something to stay up? What's your thoughts? I, I think we'll not. Know. 
I think we will. I don't think we'll get out against Wednesday. We won't get out against West Brom unless the I don't know if they can be already mathematically up. Probably not. I'm mm. guessing they can get promoted that night. That's why they've put it on Sky. So we're going to be unlikely to get something there. I think it's going to go to wire, and I think like I say, it'll go down to fight. The only sort of saving grace about going to Millwall at last game of the season is it'll be an empty stadium because last time we went down there needing something, we had Robbie Williams too scared to go take a bloody throw in because he was that scared. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, bad. Matt is... A soft underbelly. It's just, we're just happy to be here. We, we did it in Premier League. We did it when we got promoted, you know. We're never thinking, let's better ourselves. It's, oh, we've, had a, we've had a good couple of seasons now. Let's just revert to type. Puzzle, what about that guy on your shirt behind? What were he doing last night? Not Michael Stewart, probably having a beer knowing him, but that <laughs> other that other one next to you there. What were that? What were he thinking with that tackle? A bit of a rash tackle. Like, well, they were doing all right as yeah. well. Up to oh, he moment. cleared off line, didn't he, and that as well, but... I mean, Stoke, it was incredible that game last night. When it, we, they get five at Uddersfield on New Year's Day or what have you, and then Leeds beat them for five. I, I can't work it out. I mean, they, their character looked awful as well, doesn't it? But then they beat Barnsley, and it's just a real mess. But you just have to look at yourselves, aren't you, to try and get out of it. I, I don't like looking at others, but but now after tonight, I'm thinking, I mean, tomorrow everyone's going to be the same out there looking at these scores. I think there's another big one tomorrow. Is it Barnsley v... Has anyone got a fixture? Barnsley or um, someone... Six point, and I'll have a look. But there's a couple of teams that have to play each other. Barnsley right? versus Wigan tomorrow. That's uh, it. Hull City versus Millwall and Middlesbrough against Bristol City are the probably the key games that we. You know what? They should. That's what it seems really? about the Barnsley win there to keep mm. Wigan down if they get the minus twelve, which is that really. But no. I get a point there. I don't know. It's like you say, we... We, we've got to just look at ourselves and just. Mind you, doing yeah. that's probably not going to work after watching tonight, is it? But you know. Shocking. Matt, anything anyone else saying? Uh, let's have a look. So most of it really is around the, the recruitment <laughs> and the, the, the frustration around the recruitment, um, which, which we've chatted around really, it seems to have gone off onto a recruitment, um, recruitment discussion, but, uh, but yeah, so we've got Sheffield Wednesday coming up. That's to me now becomes an incredibly important game. It's one we can win. Um, <laughs> whether we will win is, is another thing, but we've, that. we've seen uh, Birmingham City. We saw with Birmingham Keep City. Keep thinking that. Think. Yeah, we'll be right. <laughs> These dodgy Vimtos, isn't it? That's going on here. But um, but yeah, Sheffield Wednesday are a bit of a mess as well. We, we definitely need a bit of the Birmingham City spirit from them, uh, and we need a lot more from from the Cowley brothers and, and the the eleven. Um, we still can do it. We can still go there and win. Will we go there and win is a completely different thing, but the players are more than capable. You know, we've seen throughout the season that uh, they have responded uh, quite a lot of times. I remember when we lost to Barnsley in, in January, and for me, that was probably, apart from tonight, one of the you know, the worst performances of the season. And we responded again, and, you know, we, we beat Charlton 4-0. We've had a few good results here and there, so there's definitely potential to do well in the squad. It just depends where they are mentally for me, and... I'm slightly uh, comforted really by it being away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where I am as well. Oddly comforted by that because we haven't scored at home <laughs> since the restart. I wasn't as upset at the Forest performance as uh, as many because no, I, I think they, um, if we'd have had that penalty in the first 15 minutes, it's a different game altogether. When you score first, it, the whole thing gets turned on its head. Mm. And um, Forest, Forest, I thought we played pretty well in the first half and then when you go behind, it's always a struggle away from home. So I wasn't that bothered. But, uh, and uh, Birmingham away, of course, was okay. Preston, uh, sorry, Reading away, again, up for 70 minutes, fine. But why? Why do you bring Smith throw off? For, for, it was 20 minutes to go. Mm. And he was, the, he was the one man who looked as if he could break through that Reading defence. And he gets taken off and we'll go for the nil-nil. And in the last... Five, in the injury time of that game, yeah. Reading could have scored twice, and we were we were exceptionally lucky to come away with a point after that because we 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 retreated for the last twenty minutes and could have lost it instead of being brave and and trying to go for the three points like we should have done in the first half tonight. And it's uh, I've only got two words to say about relegation, and that's Coventry City. Um, yeah, we can't play. Jesus. 2012, when we were in the playoffs and Coventry City went down, my confidence level went sky high because I was sky blue um, because I knew uh, that we don't play Coventry. It's uh, and they're they're coming up, of course, 
and that really about, worries me. And I, and I, isn't it? Since we last played, about 1966 or something like that. Uh, 72. 72. We played. We played them in the first division. Yeah, friendly. I think we played. I've I've obviously looked at this because uh, they they haunt me. Um, we played them in a League Cup game, I think, in '76, and played them in the first division in '72. And I think we played them about five times in total. You know, it's just that remarkable how few times we played them. Um, and and harking back to the '70s, that's an, the other thing which has been haunting me for about eighteen months, because. The last time we were on the crest of an incredible wave in 69, 70, mm -hmm. you get to 1972 and everything, everything went downhill from about Christmas time, 19, uh, 1971. Everything went downhill and it's just the same this time. So it's just repeating itself. I've just um, been reading so Danny Cowley's comments and just pretty standard stuff, really. Toffolo, you know, we'll go again and what have you, but... It was quite interesting, wasn't it, that they were making the point that they could hear a management team shouting, move it quicker, didn't they? I think Keith Andrews mentioned it and that as well. And yeah. it, but it's so obvious for us to see it and they to shout, but why is it not happening? Is it because we've played too many games? They play, it's so many questions. It's but, yeah. but why, God, this time next week, because we'll have played West Brom, we, will we have the champagne up and will we be ready to... Uh, whew, it's uh, What a week it, this it, is. Because it, there'll be no... There'll be no champagne or all like that, in my opinion, because they all, again, I think I mentioned it before, but we'll just be sat here in, well, depending on when we start, but April next season, we're talking about exactly the same stuff because it just it seems to be ingrained in the club. that We just don't mix it up. We just don't do all. We, we've played the same for God knows how many years. We're... Mm -hmm. You know, we went up to, we came down, we had a bloody lane. The, anyone, the subs it, summed it up, past didn't they? Just like for like, no difference, no risk. It's, you, you know, might, you can call it. They don't even need to turn up on Friday. because. Mm. Do you know what else annoys me though? You, you reckon, we reckon we've got leaders out there. We reckon we've got a Johnny or we've got a Christopher Schindler. And, you know, when you're on a football pitch as an experienced player, your manager tells you what to do before a match. You work on it. Yeah, all right. You do what your manager asks you to do. But there's got to be a point where a captain on pitch goes, do you know what, guys? This is not working, is it? Bloody hell. Never mind what we've been practising. Let's try something else. And somebody should be able to take control on that pitch and just say, bollocks to it. We're going to try something different for the next 10 minutes because this is just not working. Or even saying it to managers in training, someone should have the balls to say, look, Danny. And I like Danny Cowley. I think he's... I think he's He's not wowed me as much as what I thought it would be when he first started, and you know standards have sort of slipped. But I still think he's a decent manager. But your players should be able to do that to your manager, and should be able to go and say, "Look, this this is just not working for the next few games. Can we let's just try something a little bit different? You know, you don't have to be radical and start changing the full ethos of the you know the system, but mix it up a little bit. Yeah, we'll play. Let's play ten minutes, and we'll pass it around and see how that works. Then, all right, if that's not work, we need to mix it up. Give the opposition so much to think about because if three teams who are due to players have just been watching that, and imagine the feedback to manage to their you know coaches and managers at, at their respective clubs will just be just be what you want because mm. they're they're not going to score. So no. just, just get one and have done with it, you know. It's so I, so uh, easy to to watch watch and play against us. Anything from you, mate? Before we wrap up, are you uh, nine points out of nine coming up? <laughs> if only, if only. Um, no, I mean, kind of uh, the weekend's games are massive. Aren't they? kind of um, looking tomorrow. We spoke about the kind of the fixtures earlier. Um, what feels like a really kind of bad loss right now. The true extent of that will be kind of shown. Kind of come, well, is it kind of quarter to five tomorrow? When we've seen kind of how the other guys have gone, and um, be quite interesting then almost knowing what we need from those final three games or having a better indication. But for me, it's going to go right down to the wire. I think kind of, um, I'll be surprised if we're safe before that final game has started. I think we'll be out of the relegation zone. And I think kind of there'll be teams worse off than us, but I think we'll have to go and try and get something away at Millwall. And um, it's not quite where we all expected it to be at the start of the season, is it? Not really. Matt, so we're going to be back, I think, on Wednesday after... Uh... <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday because it's just seven forty-five. You get you mixed up, don't you? With all these kickoffs. Yeah, it's likely to be Wednesday, isn't it? But I yeah. think if we turn another stinker in, I think, we, yeah. I think we'll have to turn one in as well because I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> and it's <fi> and <laughs> Friday's five thirty, isn't it? That's another. Week. Yeah, it's been moved today. I think, hasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. 5.30, what's going on? I can't keep track of this, man. I don't know. <laughs> We're kicking off, though, about uh, at 7 o'clock, mate. <laughs> <It's that thing. laughs> yeah, game starts so at half five, but we'll kick off later. So yeah. we're playing Wednesday and Friday? No, Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday and Friday. Because yeah. yeah. it's going to be a late one, and, and that will probably do a pod on Wednesday. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, so... <laughs> it's too confusing. We need to finish, man. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday, Friday, <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> No one knows what's going on. <laughs> Keep drinking, it's good for you. Woo. <laughs> yeah, so I think we'll we'll probably call it there. So thank you to everyone on the live chat. I've asked very quickly if anyone fancies us to get something from Hillsborough. Mr. Mode, who's made me laugh a couple of times tonight, uh, says we couldn't even get a taxi at Hillsborough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Paul Gibson says the only one looking to do anything, Stankovic. Uh, and Chris Graves says only one where he sees a point coming. Uh, and Danny Bell says it'd be the most Huddersfield Town thing to do to actually go and win at Sheffield Wednesday. But and the good news is I'm just checking on my sky. There's no repeat of the game. So if you missed it, unlucky because you won't see it again. Beef a bin. <laughs> File it. <laughs> right. And cheers, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Up the town. Oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>